This episode is sponsored by Relogic Research. Relogic is an engineering, aerospace, and technology company dedicated to solving our nation's toughest defense problems while investing in the bright minds of Huntsville. Relogic is excited to be a part of the innovation and continued growth of the Huntsville community. Visit their website today to see what they are excited about at relogicresearch.com, and all of this information will be in the episode notes. This is Chandler Wicks, founder and CEO of Relogic Research. We are very excited to partner with Beyond Rockets in further support of their already outstanding contribution to the Huntsville community. Well, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, glad to be here. Yeah, Thanks I'm for excited. Having me. Yeah, so b- before we get started, you want to introduce yourself and we'll yeah. kind of begin there. Yeah, I'm Rob Butto. I'm the president and CEO of Downtown Huntsville, Inc. Yeah, so I know your journey to kind of get to Huntsville. I mean, you've been in and around Alabama. Yeah. You're originally from the Charlotte area, went to school mm-hmm. at the University of Alabama. Yep. Talk a little bit about growing up in Charlotte and kind of what would prompt you to get that degree and then move to Tuscaloosa. Yeah, so um, grew up in Charlotte, uh, came down to Alabama um, growing up. My grandfather, my mom's family's from um, kind of the Montgomery area. So okay. spent a lot of time uh, growing up down in Alabama. So it was, you know, familiar with, it wasn't kind of a big jump for me, uh, to go to UA. Um, but, uh, yeah, went to UA kind of with the idea of, uh, majoring in business okay. and did about a year and realized that, uh, that just wasn't for me. I had interest <laughs> in other areas. Um, and really, um, just kind of through fulfilling some minor requirements, uh, at school, uh, took geography 101, which was weather and always kind of had an interest in weather. Um, so took geography 102, which was, uh, the physical geography and, um, kind of started diving into the geography field a little bit. And I ended up, uh, majoring in geography. Um, and through that, uh, really focused a lot on, uh, mapping, um, GIS focused a lot on, um, you know, planning concepts and fundamentals. Um, so, you know, while I didn't have like a traditional planning background, like you may get at a school like Auburn, yeah. um, I kind of had some of some background there. Um, and really, you know, from that understood that, you know, kind of being able to develop and work on cities, um, was something I was interested in. Yeah. And so, so your journey for career, I guess, after you graduated from, University of Alabama, you then kind of took a job in Birmingham. I did, yes. And so you kind of still stayed in that in, in, in that in that area of Alabama, but then from there your journey kind of took you all across the country a little bit, at least in the yeah. I guess the the eastern side of the country. Kind of took you along, but then you ended up back in Birmingham. Talk yes. a little bit about sort of that journey from Birmingham out out of college to then the all the different stepping stones to get you back to Birmingham. Yeah. So, um, I, upon graduation, I worked for a nonprofit similar to DHI called Main Street Birmingham. And, uh, we focused on, um, revitalization of urban neighborhoods in Birmingham proper. So think of like Avondale, Woodlawn, Inslee, okay. um, Five Point South, things like places like that. Um, and my specific role, uh, you know, we had been awarded a, a grant to redevelop uh, storefronts and to and turn them into artist studios and, um, you know, uh, creative professional spaces, maker okay. spaces. Um, so, you know, being in a nonprofit, I, you know, had the opportunity to, uh, you know, in my first year as a young professional get, um, to do a, a full-blown commercial <laughs> develop wow. commercial real estate, uh, redevelopment project. And what year was this? This was probably in 2011, 2012. Okay. Wow. Um, so really through that experience really kind of fell in love with commercial real estate and, uh, the development side of it. Um, so I was there for about five years, uh, worked on a couple different projects, um, with main street Birmingham and kind of toward the end of my, um, first, uh, tenure there. Um, we merged with, uh, operation new Bur- operation new Birmingham, um, and formed rev Birmingham. Okay. Um, and, uh, still I was focused kind of on the development side for, uh, Rev. Uh, and then, you know, while I was in Birmingham, met my wife, we, uh, got engaged and we moved, uh, for her job up to DC. Um, wow. we lived, you know, really cool experience, got to live in the, uh, in the heart of the district. Um, and you know, that was one of our dreams is kind of live in like a big city, like DC, yeah. Chicago, yeah. New York, have a short stint somewhere like that. Just say you've experienced that, but then if yeah. it, like, was the goal at that point to always come back to Alabama or yeah. back to the South or 
Is she from the Birmingham area? She's from Houston. Okay. Um, so, you know, at that point, our goal was not really to um, move around. We, we love DC and really? we were there for a year and I mean, everything about it, we just, we loved, we lived in Logan circle. We, you know, I didn't have a car. I walked to work. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, you didn't have to worry about, I didn't even know what the price of gas was for that year. We lived there. Like wow. it was so nice. So like, uh, what was that? 2016. Yeah. 2016. Okay. Um, so then my wife's job moved her down to Houston. Um, she worked for Kendra Scott at the time, which is based out of Austin. So okay. she was opening new markets up in the Northeast and she traveled a lot. Wow. Um, and then, you know, the opportunity with that organization at the time, you know, to go down, go back to Texas was kind of, you know, yeah. the, Had the family goal. down there. And yeah. So it, it kind of made sense. So in 2017, you made the move back to Houston, I guess, yeah. back to where your wife was from. And mm -hmm. you were there for a few years. Yeah, we were there for three years. Okay. Um, and in D.C. and in Houston, I worked for the same, I worked for CoStar Group and um, commercial real estate data and analytics really, okay. um, you know, got to understand, um, you know, what are the the fundamentals and what are the, you know, the ins and outs of all the, the data that is being used to make all these redevelopment and real estate decisions wow. that you see in every market across the U S so you were kind of just permanently on like the, the, the analytics side of yeah. it. So like they would come to your company or your team and say, Hey, we're looking to uh, propose this new construction in this area of town. What's the geographic, like the landscape of it currently? What mm -hmm. could it be with this? What, you know, all the different ins and outs and numbers wise, who's visiting, who could visit all yeah. of that. That's kind of what you dealt with. We pretty much, we sold the platform that, um, you know, had just about every piece of commercial real estate data you can imagine. Wow. And, um, you know, we provided some analytics behind it, narrative forecasts, you name it, anything you would need to know and all the major, um, you know, real estate firms, developers, you know, use that software. So I remember when we were in Houston, um, you know, Camden properties, which is a major multifamily, um, developer, uh, Hanover company, they were, you know, they're all based there. Um, and you would work with their team to kind of, you know, look at, uh, what the data and analytics are saying, what are some markets that they're interested in, um, developing in and things like that. So really kind of, um, got an opportunity to talk, um, you know, about what, projects could happen in certain yeah. markets and what projects couldn't. And, uh, wow. it, it was a really cool experience. Yeah. Um, you know, there was, I was in a, a sales role, but also, you know, had a lot of, um, you know, experience kind of, you know, diving into the data and talking about what it all means. Yeah. So that was really cool. And it was really interesting to see, you know, what each, what each company valued. Um, you know, Hanover looked at, uh, you know, they're a big luxury multifamily developer. They looked at certain markets that are popular now, but, you know, based off their kind of timeline and um, deal velocity, you know, they felt like those markets were going to, you know, that bubble was going to burst before, yeah. um, you know, they could get something uh, de delivered there. And mm -hmm. uh, it was really cool to kind of see their thought process yeah. behind a lot and of And you that. were working with a lot of different, like you said, a lot of different companies in different realms and kind of navigating what each particular organization and company needed which was different for the overall yeah. project yeah and so you were in houston for three years mm -hmm. i guess around 2020 2021 you move to back to birmingham yeah so i guess it was 2019 we officially moved back okay. um i came back to work for rev in a much different role than what i originally had um you know, started with them. Yeah. Uh, I was no longer in a development role. Um, I managed the downtown uh, business improvement district. Okay. Um, and you know, what, what's unique about that is there are two business improvement districts in the state of Alabama. One's uh, in Birmingham and downtown, the other one's in downtown mobile. Mm -hmm. And it's a self-assessed tax district where, you know, it, it pretty much is, uh, uh, you know, neighborhood association for commercial properties. And, okay. uh, they, you know, self-assess, um, and you know, they had, uh, one mil tax rate. And, you know, through that pot, they have a board of directors that kind of, um, identifies priority projects that they want to work on within the footprint of the business improvement district. So, okay. um, I manage things like the cap program, um, the clean and safe, the supplemental clean and safe program that downtown has. Um, and then we manage different, uh, things like, uh, the redevelopment of 20th street in downtown Birmingham. Uh, mm -hmm. we worked really hard on a lot of, uh, strategies to 
uh, you know, for the world games, uh, the city walk development. Wow, yeah. So, uh, really hands on with a lot of those projects and it was a great experience. Yeah. Um, and I mean, and, I would assume from like your time you had in DC and the time you had in Houston, some of the projects and some of the areas that you were working on in Birmingham prior to doing all of that had really started to blossom. Yeah. I mean, areas like Avondale now, I mean, it's, it's become this, this, this entertainment area yeah. with Avondale Brewery and Saul's Barbecue and all of this and everything, all the other restaurants, Ferris on 41st and everything that's happening right there at Avondale Park and, 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 that's, and that part of town is, is incredible. Yeah. And then you come back and, and you're in Birmingham for roughly two, three years before um, you, the Huntsville opportunity. Yeah. I mean, I moved to Huntsville at the end of 2022, so yeah. about, about three and a half, about four three, years. Okay. And so prior to moving to Huntsville, um, mm-hmm. Had you ever visited Huntsville prior to that? Did you yeah. ever come up from Birmingham in your first stint while you were at school at Alabama? Yeah. Um, I came up when I was in college. Okay. Um, I came up a couple of times and that was probably, I mean, before 2010. Yeah. So, I mean, really before Huntsville kind of this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this renaissance of downtown happened. Yeah. Um, and then with Rev, uh, we were a member of, um, you know, Main Street, Alabama. And okay. uh, I never really came into downtown Huntsville, but, you know, we went to places like Decatur, Athens, things like that for mm-hmm. different kinds of events. So um, got to learn more about North Alabama, yeah. but yeah, never really um, ventured into Huntsville and ventured into in, Huntsville, in the downtown area. And so uh, talk a little bit about how the opportunity to become CEO of yeah. DHI happened. I mean, with your background, and I know we're going to probably dive more into it, but like your analytical approach to the work you do today mm-hmm. is solely based on the experiences you've had prior to becoming the CEO. Yeah. But talk a little bit about how this opportunity to become CEO came about yeah. and kind of what that process looked like from them saying, hey, like that first interview to then saying, hey, like press release goes out. Mm -hmm. You're the new CEO of DHI. Yeah. So I'll kind of start by saying, or talking about the kind of the experience I gained in Birmingham that I think set me up for this uh, position. Um, You know, in in our industry, we kind of call it place management. Um, You know, we're in this kind of quasi chamber CVB type role. Um, So we kind of call it the place management industry. Um, uh, we were a member of the International Downtown Association, IDA, and uh, they have a program called the Emerging Leaders Fellow Fellowship Program. Okay. Um, and it's 30 leaders kind of in, you know, their late 20s to 40s, um, up to, you know, the 40s. And, you know, they're in some level of management, um, but not in that, that sweet, C-suite level yet. Okay. Um, so it really was a fellowship program that... Um, we spend about a we spend about a week learning how to run an organization, um, wow. and you know all these organizations are structured a little bit differently. Like if your organization um, manages a business improvement district, you have a very stable revenue stream um, from that, but yeah. you also have to report to an additional board of directors that manages that business improvement district. And um, same thing with like uh, redevelopment authorities and things like that. So there are all these structures that you know. Um, an organization could be made up of. So kind of learned about how to, you know, run a, a place management organization. And this is while you were in Birmingham. This is last, why I was in Birmingham. The last time. Yeah. I was okay. going through this program um, with IDA um, and, you know, really got to build a network of, you know, I would say they're friends. Now I've, you know, see them every time I go to a conference, we have, you know, group me where we're, you know, bouncing ideas off of each other. And yeah. it's been really cool because, you know, we are all, we were all kind of in this middle management level when we first started. Now, you know, most of this class is at a C-suite level. Wow. Um, but yeah, it, it's neat. One of, you know, the, the people in my class is, you know, managing the downtown DC bid and, wow. um, you know, downtown Cleveland, Fort Worth. So, you know, I mean, it's just really fun to be able to kind of talk about, you know, what are they um, experiencing and kind of, you know, bounce ideas off yeah, of each other. Cause like oh. it, though the markets are a little different, obviously for any, any downtown sort of role that these people are playing in, there's that you, you I, w- I would assume you definitely have those opportunities where there's things that they're doing or events they're doing or it, whatever it might be, or the way they approach a certain thing that you could apply to Huntsville, yeah. even though Huntsville's markets different than the other markets you might be, yeah. uh, that they might be in. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's, it's different size markets, um, from all over. So, um, it was really a great experience and, uh, I'd made a lot of good friends through that. And then, you know, we we wrap it up by spending a week in New York, um, doing like in the field type, um, trainings, okay. things. So, you know, you're taking what you're learning and you're meeting, you know, New York has like 
200 something different bids um, wow. in the city. So you're meeting with all those directors and some of them are, you know, Times Square, uh, you know, meatpacking district bid directors to, you know, some of the smaller um, ones maybe out in Queens or the Bronx that, wow. you know, they have a small tight footprint. So you, they have all these different kinds of budgets, different kinds of priorities. Um, so it was really neat eye opening experience. And then from that, um, still in Birmingham, but when this opportunity, downtown Huntsville opportunity came, a, came about, um, the search committee, uh, pinged, um, the international downtown association and, um, their president, uh, David Downey, and he kind of recommended that, hey, you look at, you, you should look at some of the people that went through this program. Yeah. And um, just naturally being, you know, 100 miles down the road. Yeah. Um, it was a good, it was a good I, fit. Yeah. yeah. It was like, yeah, do, do you want to come up one afternoon and have an interview? Yeah. That's probably how the first conversations kind of came about. Yeah. I mean, I, I got a call from, um, you know, who, from the lady who was my board president last year, and she um, kind of talked me through it. And of course, being in Alabama, I, I you know, in Birmingham, I, I've, you know, was surrounded by all the great news of, you yeah. know, the momentum and all the great things that are going on in Huntsville. And, um, you know, I was getting pretty tired of being in <laughs> Birmingham and hearing people, you know, tell me, Hey, you know, Birmingham's, or I mean, Huntsville's got this, Huntsville's got that, you know, we're, we're Birmingham. We should have yeah. this, we should have that. And, um, so, you know, I, I was just kind of thinking, I was like, well, you know, um, it, you know, we just had our second child, our second son. He's, you know, maybe three months old at the time. There's never a perfect time, but, no. um, you know, it, it, there's just so much momentum going on up here, yeah. um, that I was like, well, yeah, let's, let's, let's listen and see, um, you know, let, let's learn a little bit more about this opportunity. Um, so my wife and I, we came up one Saturday morning. Um, we drove up from Birmingham is before I, you know, I, I talked to Jamie, our, you know, at DHI's board president, um, and said, yeah, I'd be interested in interviewing. I hadn't interviewed at this point, yeah, but you, you and your wife are just going to come up and just like, yeah, spend an, spend an afternoon or spend a morning here in Huntsville and just yeah. kind of see what we, it's all about. We had an, a morning to spare. We had, you know, kids birthday party in the afternoon back in Birmingham. So we were like, let's, you know, load up the kids. Let's just, you know, <laughs> spend the morning in downtown and then yeah. we'll, we'll go back. It's, you know, hour and 15 away, hour and 30 away. Yeah. Um, so we did that. We, you know, pulled up, we parked eight o'clock in the morning. Um, you know, their zoom cycles doing a spin class on the, sh on the sidewalk in front of their building. Yeah. Um, all the, the sidewalks are full of people. We park at honest, we go get coffee. I mean, eating out, we're eating outside, all the outdoor seating's full. We walk the square. There are people all out and about and it's 8 a.m. on a Saturday morning. Yeah. And there was just really a, 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 an energy and a vibrancy that, um, just seemed really natural yeah. and it was really cool. And I, I'm looking at, you know, all of the infrastructure, all of kind of how clean downtown is, um, you know, how safe it felt. Like, you know, our oldest son was running up and down, you know, the sidewalk and, you know, I, I, I it, it, we weren't worried about it. Yeah. Um, so I was there's, like, there's kids everywhere doing yeah, the same thing. Exactly. It's, it, it's, it's like, it's not like you're the only person doing that. And it's like, I think what's funny too, it's like you see it now. And I think, I think, I mean, growing up here in Huntsville and seeing it over the years, like what downtown's been able to accomplish and really like what it's continuing to accomplish. It's, it's yeah. insane. And so you're able to spend that Saturday morning doing the things that Huntsville people do. You get to go to honest coffee. You get to walk yeah. around the square, big spring park. What was those conversations like with your, your wife afterwards? Was she like, I yeah. think we should move to Huntsville. Um, I mean, it, we, we had that conversation for a while. I mean, we went back and forth on it. The, the interview process was, was pretty long. I, I think I came up in, um, September and accepted the, you know, got offered the position in November. And, okay. um, you know, I think my first day was like December 6th or 10th or something like that. Okay. Um, so, you know, during that time we, you know, really it was, more, not really about, um, you know, Huntsville or Birmingham. It, it was, we just had our second kid. It's like, okay, well, I mean, like, is life going to get any easier? It, yeah. Um, and, you know, we had heard how great, you know, Huntsville is for families and, you know, how livable it is. And, you know, that, you know, people, I think people discount, like, how much of that really matters and how attractive yeah. that is when you're, you know, thinking about, um, taking the leap. It, it's, you know, it's one of those things. It's like, you know, it, it definitely, um, is getting some, 
um, mentions as being yeah. this very, you know, desirable place to live, high quality of life. And that was, you know, a deciding factor for us. Yeah. So, and so you, you, you began your first date in December of mm-hmm. 2022. Yeah. And so, I mean, as we're recording this in April of 2024, what was that first full year, the 2023? What did 2023 look like as the yeah. CEO of DHI? Um, so it was, um, it was, it was, I felt like I was prepared, um, okay. but there was definitely a learning experience. It, yeah. You know, I, I came from the, the role I had in Birmingham. I had a lot of freedom. I had a lot of leadership and I was able to kind of, um, you know, make decisions uh, that affected um, outcomes of projects and, um, different strategies. Um, but, you know, I still reported to our CEO and CFO and, um, you know, what, and and so on. Um, so, you know, if I felt like the organization needed to go this way or that way, I I had limited kind of sway and, um, you know, that, so being able to see opportunities and then kind of run through the decision-making process and, then say, okay, well, this is the, the direction I want to take the organization in. Um, you know, that, that it, it's one of those things that, yeah, I think you could be prepared for it, but you're never really, you know, <laughs> prepared for it yeah, until you actually yeah. have to do it. Until, um, until like people are kind of looking at you for the answer. Yeah, rather exactly. Than, rather than you looking at them. Yeah. And so I, I like that role was probably something that like, you know, the, the actual day-to-day stuff, it sounds like you, you were pretty well prepared for. Yeah. You, you understood it. You understood kind of where it was going. Uh, and it's something you enjoyed, but then like that leadership role, though you were have been in, in the, in the position to have the leadership being the, the people that everyone's eyes look at now, mm-hmm. you know, that first few months are probably a little bit just, just, just getting your feet underneath. Yeah, you. exactly. Um, but you know, also at the same time, like I didn't want to be the guy from a different city that was just coming in and saying, okay, this is what worked in Birmingham <laughs> and we're going to make it work in yeah. Huntsville. Um, so, you know, I was fortunate that my that Rev um, down in Birmingham was very um, stakeholder driven and, you know, picked up a lot of uh, techniques and strategies that I could bring up here to um, conduct stakeholder engagement and kind of understand what were the things people wanted to see from DHI, where were some, um, you know, where where were some threats, where were some opportunities that uh, we could focus on. Um, So really in February of 2023, we, um, did uh, a perception survey where we asked, it was pretty thorough. I mean, it was, took about 15 minutes to answer all the questions and everything. Okay. And, you know, we were thinking, okay, we'll, we'll get them hundred, 150 responses. We got over a thousand and wow. we really asked everything from, you know, on a scale one to five rate, how safe you feel downtown with, you know, one being unsafe, five being the safest. Yeah. And out of, you know, over a thousand respondents, we had, you know, we averaged like 4.6. So people wow. felt very safe. So, yeah. which is huge. Yeah. I, mean, I think, you know, a big part of what the downtown revitalization that's been happening probably since 2017 is making this a walkable, safe place yeah. for you to enjoy where it's not just, Hey, you have to be in college to really enjoy the space, but yeah. you can have kids. You can, you can be, you can be older, you can be younger, you can be anywhere in between. And, and you're able to really traverse the, downtown Huntsville in a safe manner. And yeah, I think that's exactly. what's made it uh, desirable for these people that have opened businesses too. Yeah. It's like there's, a, there's the foot traffic is, is insane. I mean, yeah. there's even on Sundays, like th- there was a moment, there was a time where it was like Sundays were dead downtown. Yeah. And you're like, why would you go downtown? Like nothing's going on. And then you start seeing these businesses that are like, we're going to be open seven days a week. We're going to always have yeah. music. We're going to always do this, which has now prompted other businesses to start doing the same thing because mm-hmm. they see the success of one. Uh, so I think that's just like, it's, it's, it's been a unique thing to see and an incredible thing to see. Yeah. It really is. And I mean, the safety piece is so important because it's one of those things that we we were thrilled to see that people felt safe, but yeah. we also felt like, okay, we have a duty to make sure that um, we are advocating on the behalf of our stakeholders to make sure downtown remains safe. Yeah. Um, so uh, that was one thing that we kind of, you know, one piece of data we, we gathered from that survey. The other thing is, you know, we asked, we, you know, going into that um, perception survey we looked at we subscribed to kind of a foot traffic um, collection tool okay so we were able to see how all of our events were performing and we were kind of seeing mm-hmm. that they were pretty stagnant um, okay. you know no big up swings in attendance no down swings um, yeah. but you know it really felt like okay there's some more we can do here to make you know these um, you know kind of refreshed and uh, you know maybe on the upward 
you know, trajectory yeah. from an attendance standpoint. For sure. Um, so we kind of asked people in the perception survey, what are some things you would like to see at, um, you know, DHI events? Mm-hmm. What are things you liked? What are some things you would like to see more of? And, um, you know, kind of playing into the idea that we're in Music City, people want to see more music yeah, at sure. the events. So, um, you know, we use that data to say, okay, well, at all of our events, we're going to make sure that there's live music. Yeah, some sort of, li- and I think that's, yeah. and I think that's been such a cool thing too, is like, how that's become such an important thing. And really, I mean, you weren't, you were right on the cusp of when that became an important thing. Yeah. I mean, like the first season of the Orion had just ended by the time you get there. And then the second season's about to start probably in that February, April of last year. Cause they're starting the third season as we're recording this. I think today is literally the third, the first episode, the first show of their third season of the Orion is today on the, yeah. what is the, the 12th of April as yeah. we record it. And so like you were right on the cusp of becoming the CEO, right? When this, this music, um, yeah. Uh, moment for Huntsville that they're saying, hey, this is what we want to see. And you were able to use that data analytics that we talked about uh, earlier in the episode and that background that you had where you're you're really number heavy. Yeah. Like that that, that that's a big part of of the role you play is is the numbers the numbers tell a story. Mm-hmm. And if we're able to understand the numbers, we're gonna understand the story, we can then kind of not necessarily write the, the story that we want to see, but we have a better direction on what we want to accomplish and exactly. how we can do that. Yeah. And I mean you you nailed it right there. I mean, um, I think my, my background in that data analytics really, um, set me up well, uh, especially at the beginning because we, you know, had all these data tools and, you know, I valued that kind of, uh, information. So I was able to look at, um, you know, the, the returns from the perception survey, I was able to pair that with, you know, the, the data that we had in our placer AI, which is the foot traffic um, okay. survey. And then, you know, we have uh, commercial real estate software and uh, just some other data. And I was really able to um, lean on that to see where there were opportunities and where there were some things that we could, that we needed to focus on in 2023. Yeah. And, um, you know, the, as a, as a result, we set goals, you know, around um a lot of our events and you know the overarching goal was we wanted to see an increase in attendance at all of our events and you know we focused on strategies that would um you know help with that goal so you know live music activity more programming activities for you know kids and families um and then you know obviously uh programming and activities for um young professionals and uh, you know people of all ages yeah um so that set us up well. And, you know, as a result, uh, you know, we saw all of our events had, um, positive, had a positive, um, you know, or had an increase in, um, attendance this year, which was okay. great. Um, our food truck rallies, they had about a 1200, um, person, wow. uh, increase on average per event o- over the, over 2023. Yeah. After 2023. You, did the, like you did the surveys at the beginning and then 2023 was when mm-hmm. you kind of implementing yeah, based so on that feedback. February, we got, we did the surveys, we got all that information. We baked all of that into kind of our planning process. So, you know, May of 2023, we're rolling out all of our events and we are using all that information that people share with dictate us. dictate what these, what these events are going to look yeah. like. Okay. And, um, as a result, you know, it, it paid off because we accomplished our goals. Yeah. We had all our attendance at all these events was up, um, at events like food trucks, it was up significantly. Um, at Tinsel Trail this year, uh, we had 136,000 visitors, um, wow. visit Tinsel Trail. That was a 47% increase from and to, the and, year before. And, I mean, y'all do a, a variety of events mm-hmm. at DHI. And Tinsel Trail is kind of your staple. Your biggest, yeah. It's their biggest event y'all do. Oh, yeah. And it's far. continued to grow. Over, I think I've had a tree there. Last year, I didn't do a tree, but the, year, the two year, two or three years prior, I had a tree. Yeah. And some of the trees are just beginning to accompany. I mean, I've, eventually, I, I feel like y'all are going to have to have trees around like, the, <laughs> the square and everything. Yeah. Because just the amount of people that are wanting to be a part of it. Yeah. But I know that, like, so as we're recording this, April of 2024, I mean, the events and getting into the swing of things have just kind of started. I think mm-hmm. next week, uh, after we record this, um, the open, the, the mm-hmm. putt-putt starts. It'll be done by the time it, this airs. But there's a lot of events that are, there's some new events that I'm really excited yes. about that start in May uh, and go to October, as ver- as well as a variety of other events. So talk a yeah. little bit about sort of what is the, 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 the event schedule, so to speak, for what DHI is doing yeah. uh, this summer, fall, and then even into the Christmas time frame. So, um, you know, listening again to stakeholder engagement, we felt like there was a real opportunity um, for an event that really catered to our young professional demographic. Um, so 
On May 16th, uh, we are launching um, a partnership with the Huntsville Music Office, a concert series at uh, Campus 805 called 805 After 5. Okay. Um, so we'll have, you know, um, touring bands um, that will – um, have play on Butler Green. We'll have um, some food trucks, some artists, um, different kinds of programming. All the Campus 805 tenants will, you know, have a role in programming wow. out on Butler Green. Um, of course, Straight to Ale and Yellowhammer will uh, be serving up uh, food and um, drinks. Yeah. Um, and really, we want this to be an event that um, – you know, is music related, of course, but if, you know, maybe the act isn't someone that you're, you're familiar with, or, you know, maybe you're not into that particular genre. Um, it's still an event that you feel like I want to come to because, you know, it, it's a, it, it's a gathering of, you know, my friends, yeah, you know, people sure. my age, and it, it's just kind of becomes that can't miss YP event yeah. of the year. Um, and I, so, I, I think the timing too is incredible because like, yeah. as you get through the summer, and then you get into that those like August, September, October ones. The weather will just be amazing. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know it, it's really important. Um, you know, a lot of our businesses, whether they're at Research Park or downtown, they rely heavily on the young professional demographic for, sure. for talent. So we want uh, this demographic to feel like you know Huntsville has everything um, yeah. that they want in a city, um, and that they have this event. They have a sense of ownership under or over it. Um, we also kind of see an influx of uh, interns uh, with, yeah. you know, a lot of the research park uh, firms uh, and they rely on a lot of those interns to eventually fill yeah. um, these positions after graduation. So um, it's our opportunity to make a really great first impression for them. Um, yeah. So events like this are really important from that standpoint. Um, but also, you know, it will be a place that, you know, if you want to bring your kids and just enjoy a night out, uh, you can do that too. Yeah. It's not going to be, you know, anything, anything inappropriate for kids or anything yeah. like that. But definitely we want to make sure that, um, the YPs definitely feel like they've got something that's yeah. uh, catered to them. Um, you know, we'll still have our food truck rallies. Okay. Um, those are the, uh, third Friday of the month, um, f- May through October. Okay. Um, we're going to be still having uh, live music at those. Um, we're going to look at adding some additional programming and activation. Okay. Really, our goal with that is to increase attendance, but then also get our attendance to stay or our attendees to stay a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, have that dwell time kind of increase a little bit. Exactly. We, we really would like to see that dwell time increase. Um, and then uh, we'll still do our uh, our uh, movies in the park. That'll be in October. Um, the other one that we are, um, you know, really excited about some of the cool changes that we're making this year is our uh, art walk. Okay. Um, we are moving the first to the May art walk and the June art walk from being on a Friday night to being on a Saturday mid morning from, you know, 10 to two. Okay. Um, those will be on the square. Um, but, uh, we feel like, you know, there's an opportunity to maybe attract a new audience yeah. that can't get out there after work on a Friday night. Maybe, you know, they're looking for something to um, do on a Saturday morning and, you know, we want to kind of bring a market to downtown on a Saturday morning. So uh, we're excited to see kind of, you know, how, how the tenants will react to that. And, you know, we'll have, we've got the ability to kind of track that. So um, we'll be looking at the data to all these events to see what's worked and what hasn't. Um, The other thing that I'm really excited about. So for the first time since uh, 2018, we're, partnering with NASA and bringing NASA in the park back on uh, June 22nd. Okay. So, um, that'll be in big spring park. Um, you know, NASA and, uh, their team, they're bringing a lot of the contractors that are working on uh, different projects. Um, and it's going to be a great opportunity to kind of see what's going on behind the gate. For sure. yeah. Um, and it'll be family friendly, of course, free to the public. Um, and we're really looking forward to that. Had a planning meeting again with their team, uh, you know, this morning. So really, really looking forward to that. And then, um, tinsel trail, uh, again, just growing more trees all over the park. Well, so, you know, we kind of took a pause on growing tinsel trail, uh, this year. Um, we felt like now that we've got the attendance, you know, really high or the attendance is really increased on tinsel trail. It's kind of become, you know, one of the marquee, uh, holiday events, 
Um, we really felt feel like there's an opportunity to kind of polish it up a little bit more and okay. um, really kind of lean into it being this marquee event. So um, we're going to look at still keeping the same number of trees, which is about 420 to 440 trees. Wow. Um, and uh, making sure all the elements that go along with Tinsel Trail are really, you know, polished and um, just, you know, we're, we're paying attention to detail and just yeah. making sure that experience is really high. And, and, um, I think if we can do that, then we can grow the footprint, um, yeah. again, but we want to make sure that it still maintains its quality before we get it too big to <laughs> kind of reel all that yeah, back in for sure. Um, but the other thing that we're excited about is, you know, last year, um, something that really helped, I think, uh, you know, grow, the event was the partnership with skating in the park. Yeah. Um, and we created, we kind of co-branded our two events um, called rocking around the rocket city. And, you know, these were two events that both are in the park for a long time that, you know, we supported each other, but they were separate. And, you know, there was a clear, you know, line between those two. Yeah. And, you know, now we're trying to create some synergies. You can walk between the two of them fairly easily. Um, we, you know, did a big rocket city tree last year and that was, you know, custom designed 23 foot tree. We're looking to wow. grow that this year. Um, and, uh, just continue to build on that partnership. And, um, you know, if we can do that, uh, I think that'll even make tinsel trail better this year than it was last year. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, there's so many different things you have going on at DHI. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you, you have your hand in a lot of different pots. What does the average day look like as CEO of DHI? Yeah. So, you know, we do a lot of events and um, I think that that's what we are known for, but yeah. we also do a lot of stuff kind of behind the scenes. We do a lot of development consulting. We work a lot on behalf of our, re uh, of our businesses advocating on their behalf, whether okay. it's with the county or the city. Um, so for me on a given day, it may be, you know, having coffee or lunch with a developer, kind of learning a little bit more about their project, um, sharing a little bit of the data that we have mm -hmm. to maybe um, let them know like, hey, this potentially could work well or this, you know, I, I don't know if the community would like this or that or whatnot. Um, we'll work a lot with, uh, you know, restaurants or food and beverage establishments that are looking to come to Huntsville. Um, mm -hmm. That takes yeah. a lot of my time is, you know, hearing about what they're looking for and trying to find kind of um, opportunities that could fit their criteria yeah. and kind of selling that on them, telling them the big picture um, as to what's going on in downtown. Um, and then, you know, a lot of it, you know, right now it's event planning because that's kind of in <laughs> the season we're in. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and, and then it's also, you know, we're a membership based organization. It's, you know, we, we want to provide a really healthy, um, you know, a, a very healthy uh, mix of benefits to our members. Yeah. So uh, it's curating experiences around downtown that helps showcase downtown, helps showcase new projects or uh, new strategies and kind of deliver those out to our members. So yeah. it, it's kind of a lot, but um, <laughs> a little bit of everything. Yeah. It, it's a little bit of everything and no day, no day is ever the same, but um, that's what I love about it. Yeah. And so I know that like, I mean, DHI, obviously the downtown areas is, is, is what y'all cover primarily, mm -hmm. but there's also a lot of sub areas, sub yeah. uh, districts yeah. I, I, uh, that y'all are also included with uh, the low mill area, blossom area. I mean, talk a little bit about, I think the John hunt, huge mm -hmm. stuff that's going on over there. Yeah. How do you, you know, balance that time with D, the downtown Huntsville perimeter that people can kind of associate with you versus all the other areas that you mm -hmm. do, you do kind of have a little bit of a hand in. Yeah. So that's something that we are actively um, working on this year is uh, so taking a step back, we work in eight districts, the core okay. Lincoln mill, Montesano, Mary Mac, West Huntsville, which includes stove house and campus eight Oh five um, low mill, John hunt medical district. Okay. Um, so it's a pretty expansive area. Yeah. Um, you know, because downtown has grown so much, so have these other districts. For sure. And there are a lot more stakeholders in these districts now than the than there had been in the past. So, and these districts all have kind of different priorities. So right now what we're working to do is, one, we had to, we're a three-person team. We had to kind <laughs> of look at, okay, what kind of capacity do we have to really take on a more hands-on approach in some of these other districts? So we made some changes so we could do that. 
Um, so right now what we are doing is we are identifying kind of stakeholder groups in each district that we can begin to, uh, you know, hold conversations with, um, do some engagement and kind of identify what are some priorities in each one of these districts that we can then build a work plan around. Okay. So our goal in 2024 is to, um, you know, in probably four or five of our districts outside of downtown, um, outside of the downtown core is to, by the end of 2024, have solid work plans in place that s- the stakeholders of those districts are, you know, bought in and yeah. behind. Um, so that's kind of where, you know, the Campus 805 event kind of comes yeah, into kind play. kind of branching you out to that area yeah. too. So right. there's really an opportunity for us to be even more hands-on in those districts. And that's going to be something this year we really kind of um, explore what that looks like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've, you know, we're doing a lot in John Hunt right now. Yeah. Um, that is a, you know, that is a really dynamic district in sure. my opinion. Um, I think uh, when people think of, you know, that being a district of downtown, it's probably a little yeah. odd. Yeah, like, but, I don't understand. But there's, I mean, the, the uh, I think when you start diving into the numbers, I mean, yeah. which is probably what you've, you've, you've been able to do and see is like, there's so much happening from cross country races, there's yeah. tennis things, there's baseball stuff over there. There's, you know, the park itself. And I think at the timely thing that's happening is pretty, probably the next week or two as we're recording this is that big announcement for the, uh, con the, the two day festival yeah. coming to John hunt, which I yeah. am so excited about. Yeah. Um, and I am just waiting for them to announce it. And that, that'll be something that I would assume on y'all's end that after this event happens in September, the numbers of that event will really dictate maybe what is happening in that district yeah. moving forward. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that'll be a game changing, um, event for that district, but I mean, you, you hit on it again, like with the park and the cross country. I mean, these are big sports tourist tourism draws yeah. and while, you know, maybe not every resident of Huntsville is using the cross country course on a <laughs> daily basis. Yeah. Um, you know, running lanes is a big event. I think it was in November. It had, you know, teams from all over the country, um, a lot of those teams came from the West Coast. Those are folks that are staying in our downtown hotels. Yeah. And, you know, tax revenues come into the city. Uh, they're supporting our local food and beverage establishments. So, you know, right now, the work that we're doing in John Hunt, it's very in a support role. Um, yeah. You know, you got the Sports Commission, you got the city, you got the soccer club down there doing a lot. So much. Um, so, really, it's making sure that those visitors feel like they're connected to downtown. Yeah. But, you know... You also have projects like Stadium Commons, the hotels that are, um, you know, that will eventually overlook the stadium. And uh, you have a lot of these um, live, work, and play elements that are going to start to pop up in John Hunt over oh, time. Sure. And that's where, you know, DHI will probably take on more of a of a formal management role to like kind of what we're doing in downtown and other districts as you know, that live work and play element really starts to develop and it's going to happen. I think fairly quickly. Yeah, um, it, it's a, it's a cool district. I mean, yeah. I mean, talking with, about the, I mean, the, this, the, the HCFC's like area and everything they're doing there. I mean, the new skate park, the new, yeah. Uh, used to be was it Kids Zone? I don't even know if they still branded it as Kids Zone. Yeah, it's still Kids Zone. Kids Zone. Okay, yeah, we we take our kids there. I mean, you're lucky on on a Saturday or Sunday if you can even uh, yeah. If your Edgar's kid can even is get packed in there. and Kids Zone is packed. <laughs> yeah. And so it's it's a it's such a cool dynamic space. It is. Um, and I think like you said there's there's so much happening over the next really probably in the next probably within 2024 that we're mm-hmm. going to see new announcements, new developments, new groundbreakings. I mean, yeah. back 40 just opened, which is really, I mean, that place is just killing it yeah. on that corner. I mean, it, it's hard to go in on a Saturday mm-hmm. uh, afternoon or even on a Saturday for lunch and find a parking spot. I thought their parking lot was way too big. And then I went there <laughs> when it was full and I was like, they need a bigger parking slot because it yeah. is just insane. I mean, and you were able to connect yourself with downtown and the Orion, I think last year you'll have like the tram service. We did, yeah. That I think was a, was a huge draw for people that live in those hotels like the Avenue or the Artisan mm-hmm. or staying at the hotels at the 106 Jefferson or wherever. Or they live in they live in Twickenham and they just want to walk to get on mm-hmm. the bus to go to a concert. I mean, those areas were like, though, you know, when people think about downtown, they think about the square, they think about Clinton, they think about, you know, Holmes Avenue you know, the work being done there is going to, is, is, is already and is going to continue to overflow to these areas yeah. that are going to benefit from the support they're getting. Yeah. And, you know, really, I mean, not to go too much on a tangent here, but I, you know, the area that really gets me excited is, and, and I hate to call it the Skybridge project because it's yeah. a lot more than that. Yeah. Um, but you know, the flood mitigation, the, the opportunities that that will create 
creating some more developable land, yeah. but also, you know, a linear park that, you know, eventually could connect up to a and down to, you know, ditto landing. Um, but, you know, that's going to take kind of a, an area that's been, you know, underutilized or, you know, hasn't been able to be utilized yeah. and um, beautify it in a way similar to Greenville, South Carolina. And I think you're going to see a lot of development follow that. You're going to see a lot yeah. of people using that area. Um, it's going to be a beautiful linear park and it's going to take something that, you know, was, I guess, an eyesore and yeah. make it a, I think, a, a community asset. Yeah. And I think it's, it was an area that was almost, you know, not necessarily, it wasn't noticed because there wasn't anything to notice about it. Yeah. Anything to look like. And I think, you know, with the development and the announcements that have happened over the last really four or five months with the data landing, getting their huge announcement for mm-hmm. that, re, that, uh, that development, which I think is huge. That kind of is the anchor point. And then you have everything that's kind of becoming north of that towards downtown, towards yep. A&M, that's going to be able to kind of benefit from this. Uh, we had Dennis Madsen on last year, and that was one of the coolest episodes because mm-hmm. we talked a lot about, you know, the planning of, you know, this creating this walkable uh, area of this place in Huntsville that you can traverse from Ditto Landing to A&M to downtown to air, all areas. Yeah on greenways and by bike you can run you can walk you can do everything and then also having these areas where like that low mill area where the sky bridge will be where there's entertainment too you can just you can you can stop off and and have and have lunch you can stop off and have a drink um which i think is incredible um so you uh, obviously you haven't been this role of ceo at dhi for too long but there's a lot of incredible things that are happening yeah As, as as we've talked a lot about what 2024 looks like um, what do you hope to see in the next, maybe more or less, you know, 2025, 2026, mm-hmm. 2027, like what, what are the next three to five years look like for you? And what are some, maybe like, you know, two or three big things you would love to see, uh, accomplish here in Huntsville? Yeah. So from an organization standpoint, um, we are really focused on, um, downtown's grown a lot. Uh, the city market area that everywhere has grown a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for us to, I think, be able to do our job effectively, we need to grow our, increase our capacity and grow our team. For sure. Um, so that's going to be a priority over the next year is, you know, coming up with strategies that we can implement to grow our team um, so we can be more active in, you know, areas like Lincoln Mill, Low mm-hmm. Mill, yeah. Stove House, Campus 805, John Hunt. Um, and, w- and we can be active in those areas without, um, you know, losing focus on the core for sure. Um, so that's going to be a, a focus for, for me, um, really, I mean, for a while, I think. Um, but you know, one thing that we really want to focus on too, is we want to see some office development growth. Um, you know, this is kind of bucking the national trend. Um, but, uh, we have very low office vacancy, um, to a point where it's a threat to our downtown, um, because as we're growing, so are our businesses. Mm. Um, and the ones that are downtown, they have limited options for, you know, limited options of space for them to grow into. So that yeah. means they go look at other, in other districts. And, um, ultimately those are employees that are no longer supporting our food and restaurant, yeah. or I mean, our restaurant and beverage and retail, um, yeah. businesses. It kind, of, it kind of limits that, that midday, lunch track yeah. that these, these businesses really are, 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 it's, it's easy to get people downtown after hours. Yeah. That's like, that'll do itself. Getting yeah. people there during the day is sometimes tough if it's not a weekend. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, and, and if you think about it, you know, the daytime headcount is so important because those are people that they are supporting, you know, domain South multiple times a month for lunch meetings or, yeah. you know, they're supporting Beezer, or, you know, what, whatever restaurant honest, you know, they're having, they're having meetings at honest or green bus or whatever. And those are happening, you know, on a frequent basis. Yeah. And that's really important because, you know, to the other resident that may come to downtown once or twice a month, you know, that's just not the same level of, um, you know, use coming to the, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, um, we need to make sure that we have that daytime head count yeah. because those are just repeat customers, uh, time and time again. And the way for us to do that is to continue to increase, um, you know, the office inventory. So yeah. we're starting to see some office development pick up. Um, but, uh, it's definitely going to be something that DHI has to champion and kind of get behind and, um, try to incentivize or, you know, encourage. Yeah. Um, because if we don't, uh, that could be a, a 
a threat to downtown. So yeah. that'll be something that we focus on and I'd love to see more of, um, some more office development for sure. Yeah. Um, and if we can focus on that, then we'll have more opportunities to attract more retail and yeah. bars and restaurants down. And I, I think that that's like, you know, as, as, as we've had conversations off air about stuff like this and we've had conversations with other developers, other, other people within the same realm mm-hmm. talking about Huntsville and just, you know, but I think, you know, oftentimes, at least for Lincoln Mill, I know it's like their goal was to fill this building with tenants because that helps support the restaurant and entertainments that are yeah. in the front. I mean, we're recording it in the offices, but we have, you know, I think Salt, it's it's Salt Smokehouse is now opening where Fusion was. Mm-hmm. We have Turbo Coffee um, and there's a variety of other spaces. But, you know, when, when you're able to say, hey, we have this office building that houses this many people, has this many floors, and there's this many people that work here on, yeah. a, on a daily basis, it's easier to get that restaurant that everyone really, really wants yeah. because there's already people, you know, a block and a half away that will be there for lunch. Yeah. And, and, and that selling point is, it's hard to beat. Yeah, it really is. I mean, when we talk to a lot of these um, restaurants that are interested in coming up to Huntsville or coming down to Huntsville, depending on where they're based out of. I mean, you know, they, they come and visit and they see, you know, nighttime people are all over the place. (laughs) It's vibrant. It feels great. Um, and they, they like that. That's huge. But you know, the selling point for them is, you know, we need that daytime traffic to be able to hit our numbers to make, you know, downtown a viable option for us to bring, you know, X, Y, or Z restaurant here. So, um, that's going to be a priority for us. Um, and that's, you know, something I would like to see, um, continue to grow over the, and it'll, it'll be a slow process. Um, it'll probably take five years for us to, um, you know, hit a, a target number that we need to hit. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate you taking the last yeah. little bit talking about, uh, your experiences, your journey to be, now become the CEO of DHI. And I'm excited to kind of see what the next, the rest of 2024 looks like. I know that the Campus 805 After 5 is something that I am very excited about yes. and will probably be there um, every every month, if, if I had to guess, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate it. If anyone's listening, last question we always ask all of our guests is if they're listening and they want to find out more about DHI, they're a business owner and they want to mm-hmm. join, uh, they're just interested in what you're doing and want to connect with you, where can they find you yeah. on social and online? So... I would recommend um, our website is, you know, packed with information, um, downtownhuntsville.org. Okay. Um, you can find out anything from, um, you know, you'll see our annual report from 2023. So you can see, you know, the impact we had on the community to um, membership information to um, our event calendar. Um, we you can also subscribe to our newsletter um, through the website uh, okay. that comes out every Thursday morning. Um, and we have, you know, we highlight small business, uh, small business every week. We have a trivia question event calendar. Um, and then we also have a couple downtown related articles uh, in there. Um, and then just follow us on, <clears throat> on our social media channels, uh, downtown HSV, um, both on Facebook, LinkedIn, um, and uh, Instagram. Perfect. Yeah. And we'll have all their information and links in the episode notes or in the description of the video if you're watching it there. Uh, but I appreciate you taking the last little yeah. bit and I continue to look forward to the impact you'll have as CEO of DHI uh, the rest of 2024 and for the next few few years and the, and the, and the rest of your career. I think Huntsville is yeah. continuing to grow and I think you'll have plenty of work to keep your hands busy. Yeah, I think so. It's been a, it's been a blast um, yeah. so far and uh, it, you know, it just continues to look up and, you know, we definitely as an organization have a lot that we've, um, we're focusing on, but, um, you know, I, I know there's a lot of good things in the future for downtown and for the city. So we're really excited. Well, thank you again for being here. Awesome.